All right, y'all, welcome back to the show. It's Anti-War Radio. Appreciate y'all bearing with me today. A bit discombobulated Monday morning thing going on here. I really should have a show at night, but then I'm on the West Coast, and all my guests are either on the East Coast or in Europe. So that makes that kind of problematic with the whole time zone difficulty and all that. But anyway, uh, speaking of guests east of here, Fred Bronfman is on the line. And uh, he's written this incredible article. It's extremely important. It was the Spotlight article on Antiwar.com on Friday. It's at Alternet.org. Mass assassinations lie at the heart of America's military strategy in the Muslim world. And uh, now let me tell you a little bit more about Fred. He's the author of The Third Indochina War, The Old Man, a biographical account of a Lao villager. Voices from the Plain of Jars, Life Under an Air War, Life Under the Bombs, Project Air War, The Village of the Deep Pond, Ban Zapang Muk, Laos, and um, he's got a website at trulyalive.org. Now, welcome to the show, Fred. How are you? I'm doing great, thanks. <laughs> uh, good to talk to you again. Uh, oh, you. And, and by the way, I should say you got an article at antiwar.com, too, uh, called We Must All Be Prepared to Torture, about uh, good old Charles Kruthammer over at the Washington Post. Well, worth a read as well. So um, if it's okay with you, I'd like to kind of just continue the conversation I was just having with Phyllis Bennis, also from Alternet, about the motivation for the attack of September 11th. And to just cut right to the chase real quick, uh, you know, she basically went down the list. I think Michael Scheuer did it the best. He said there's the six reasons, and that's, uh, support for Israel in Palestine, the bases in Saudi Arabia that were used to bomb Iraq and blockade Iraq and kill a million people over the space of 10 years, support for the dictatorships in the region, and pressure on them to set the oil price where Houston wants them, high or low. I guess low was the complaint in the 1990s. And then reason number six was that America's at least blind eye, or, or in bin Laden's words, support for Russia, China, and India in their wars against Muslims. And these were the highlights of all... All bin Ladenite propaganda all through the 1990s. This is what the hijackers agreed with, and uh, this is why 3,000 people died. It's the price we pay for empire. And so what they did, Fred, was they lied, and they told us they hate us because how good we are and how evil they are, and for nothing that America ever did. It's something about that hateful extremist Islam that they believe in that makes them do this. And so now we have to regime change the world, and, and, and here in the Obama administration, we need to solidify and expand Dick Cheney's mass assassination program, as though the occupations and the wars and the torture and the assassinations aren't just reasons, seven, eight, nine, ten on the list, Fred, <laughs> determined to get us bombed in the future here in America. Well, I, I can't disagree with what you said. I don't uh, claim to understand uh, Osama bin Laden, but I think the point is um, I've seen numbers between 1.3 to 1.6 billion Muslims. Uh, and uh, the people who are actually doing the killing and the bombing are not Osama bin Laden or uh, extremist or religious fanatics necessarily. They start out as people in many cases who've lost family members uh, or lost friends due to uh, our war making uh, in uh, Iraq, uh, where we lost, where uh, uh, over one million people, as we've discussed, have been uh, five million people have been killed, wounded, or made homeless. Uh, Afghanistan, the numbers are are uh, escalating, uh, and then of course in Saudi Arabia, we've supported a um, vicious dictatorship. Uh, which to this day doesn't even allow women to drive, as far as I remember. And um, th these, these either through our direct killing or indirectly supporting regimes which kill and torture their own people. Remember, these regimes are the ones we um, uh, send, send people to under the so-called rendition to do our torturing for us, uh, annoy people. And I think what's insane about uh, where we are today, I won't even talk about the morality of this. If anyone thinks that it's moral for the United States to have a small um, group of people going around the world murdering uh, every, anyone uh, they wish to, 
uh, without any kind of legal process, without any chance to prove their innocence or anything, uh, I think that you have a real moral problem. I don't think that's moral. I don't think that's legal, et cetera. But let's for a moment just stay on, is it in, in America's interest to uh, antagonize and provoke hundreds of millions of Muslims through these insane policies? Well, um, I would argue it isn't. And let me uh, quote who I think is the best source on the subject, General Stanley McChrystal. <laughs> In the famous Rolling Stone article, he said that for every civilian we kill, we create 10 new enemies. Uh, we're creating, we're killing dozens of civilians, David. There's no serious argument about that. And uh, therefore, we're creating hundreds and hundreds of people who want to kill us. Uh, whether this is in our national interest, I, again, I don't see how anyone could make that argument that this is in our national interest. And, and by the way, finally, for every so-called, ins how many insurgent leaders are there after all? I mean, we're, we're flying thousands and thousands of these drone strikes every month. Every day you see reports of a dozen people killed here, 50 there, 100 there. How many insurgent leaders are there? Uh, and... Um, uh, the fact is that we, our present government, is relying on assa deploying assassins all over the Muslim world, killing anyone they want without any judicial process. Is the heart of their counterinsurgency strategy. Well, and Fred, and here's the thing about that: is that uh, they're actually, if you read the New York Times version of this, this is about you know the Democrats are finally getting really smart, and instead of going in with a giant hammer like Bush's invasion of Iraq, they're using the scalpel, the laser sight, to get just the bad guys and do it in in a surgical way to minimize that McChrystal ratio that you're talking about. Yeah, that's the argument, and and what I present in my article are uh, numerous quotes, which, by the way, when the New York Times quotes something against what the government is saying, I take it quite seriously, because 90% of what the New York Times and the other major media reports is what the government wants it to report, because they quote official sources. Um, there are numerous quotes now that indicate that the drone strikes are just randomly killing anyone they feel like, and then they they uh, call them assassins, or excuse me, insurgents, um, We've empowered something like 9,000 assassins in Iraq and Afghanistan who work up every day looking for someone to murder. Uh, this is a vast increase over what we've had in the past. And as you're pointing out, Scott, when uh, we had our famous uh, Obama evaluation of our policy towards Afghanistan about a year ago now, the Douglas position, the, the, uh, the peace position was Biden who said, let's only do assassination. Of course, let's, let's ramp it up as they have. And then the, the so-called hawkish position was McChrystal, who said, let's do assassination and have 30,000 more troops. Uh, this is what American foreign policy towards the Muslim world has come down to. And I argue in my article that people in listening to this radio program, or people we all know, may well die um, over the next decade because of this insane policy. You know, the, the, what the argument comes down to, Scott, is a very simple issue. And I think this, to the extent that rationality or logic uh, has any say in any of this, we need to decide whether we believe Proposition A or Proposition B. Cheney is Proposition A. They all hate us. They're going to kill us anyway, so it doesn't matter how many we kill of them. Proposition B. When you hit a hornet's nest with a baseball bat, you're much likely to get you're much more likely to get stung than if you wore, if you don't hit the base the, the hornet's nest with a baseball bat. Even if the bees in the hornet's nest may potentially want to sting you, they won't sting you unless you provoke them. Uh, and this, uh, we're increasing the possibility that we're going to get hit because we 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 are now fanning out throughout the whole Muslim world. I, I list in my uh, article. Uh, the countries where Petraeus got permission uh, to kill anyone he feels like and which are, where they're presently either presently conducting operations or are planning to. All right, and, now hold uh, it there, Fred. I mean, yeah. that's the most important point. I hope people heard that clearly, and I think I'll just let you start off with that sentence again when we get back from this break. It's Fred okay. Bronfman, Anti-War Radio. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime, 760-569-7753. That's 760-569-7753. It's all alive from baseball to apple pie to bomb. Waco, Texas, heaven's gate to Oklahoma bomb. 
The desert storm syndrome experiment that went wrong. Inject our own, cause they probably won't come home anyway. The Vietnam conflict was a mere experiment. No. So just came back from the war. Couldn't tell you where they went. And commandos said don't come back. Alright, y'all, welcome back to the show. It's anti war radio. Talking with Fred Bronfman from alternet.org. He's written this uh, incredibly important piece. It's one of these for those of you who don't read too often, just like to listen to radio or whatever. This one you read, I think. Mass assassinations lie at the heart of America's military strategy in the Muslim world. Now, Fred, when we went out to break, you were telling me that Barack Obama gave uh, General David Petraeus permission to do what now? To unilaterally engage in assassination in Afghanistan, Iraq, Pakistan, Iran, the former Russian republics, Yemen, Somalia, Saudi Arabia, Kenya, the Horn of Africa, and wherever else he deems necessary. Whoa. Now, wherever else he deems necessary, inside the Central Command area or anywhere? Latin America, New York, in the end. I mean, the point is... Um, these people are unaccountable to no one. There are 13,000 of them. They call them the Special Operations Command. Uh, they, and the uh, New York Times, uh, when they reported this uh, secret uh, uh, Petraeus directive, <clears throat> they said the following, unlike covert actions undertaken by the CIA, such clandestine activity does not require the president's approval or regular reports to Congress. Let me read that again. The clandest, such clandestine activity does not require the president's approval or regular reports to Congress. So President Obama has empowered the, the Military Special Operations Command to kill anyone they want without even asking the president or Congress about it. Uh, right, because the, the uh, CIA has to report to the uh, well, the I mean, gang of eight, <laughs> the top leaders in Congress. The CIA does pretty much what it wants, but yeah, at least but technically, a anyway, yeah. Procedure. yeah. Yeah, well, this goes back to Seymour Hersh's article about Donald Rumsfeld preparing the battlefield, and I think even back in 2005, the coming wars. And it was all about Don Rumsfeld's strategy of wresting as much covert action authority away from the CIA as he could and making them all special access programs in the name of preparing the battlefield for future overt conflict. Yeah, and David Petraeus is far more popular than any, excuse me, any military figure in this country, maybe perhaps any political figure in this country, mm -hmm. for all I know. Yeah. Uh, and he therefore, because of his aura of success, of having uh, succeeded in Iraq and reducing the violence, uh, which, by the way, uh, as I know, was primarily due to the uh, perceived success of assassination in Iraq. It had nothing to do with. I mean, that, the other factors were important, but the the key factor, and that, and the proof of that is they appointed uh, uh, Stan McChrystal to head up forces in Afghanistan. His only previous experience was assassinating people. That was his uh, specialty. Uh, so uh, we now have a situation. Operative word there is perceived, I think, there, Fred. They well, believe yeah, I, that assassination I, I, was the key. I actually don't know why the violence went down in Iraq. Some people, like Noam Chomsky, has suggested because we'd already murdered hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of people had been murdered, and uh, they, were just, they were just exhausted. Um, uh, perhaps arming the Sunni was a good short-term strategy. I think you're going to see the uh, stupidity of that. Uh, in the next few, uh, in, the, in the next year, as as civil war uh, may well break out in Iraq, but my point is, even if you want to give Petraeus credit for what happened in Iraq, uh, since then he's been a total disaster. Uh, he's his biggest mistake, besides this assassination business, is extending the war into Pakistan, where we've destabilized the nuclear armed country uh, by. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, all the drone strikes in Pakistan, of which there are dozens now every day, the uh, uh, sending in special forces, uh, provoking the Pakistani government, and what's been the result of it? Uh, Al-Qaeda is stronger than it was before, and uh, there's a whole new Pakistani jihadist force that's been built up in Pakistan.